This is the Video Game Podcast, episode 647 for March 16th, 2020. R-G-J-P. Hey, it's a background. It's Japanese racing simulators with bars. Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast, the show where we learned in the intro, or the pre-show, love really can bloom on the battlefield. Oh, go away with that <laughs> dumb quote every single time. Where we learned we're the best of Skype friends. I'll accept that one. Okay. I'll accept that one. I'm your host, Boston. You... Joining me as always is Moonpeer. Thank you. This is the way. Oh, God, I hate you. Um, See, now you've got to mute something I said, and you've got to deal with the fact that I said this is the way within the first three minutes of the show. show down. Do you want to restart it and get rid of that stupid love on the battlefield? Quote? No, I don't, because uh, uh, the cake is a lie. We gotta, we're checking all the checkboxes here. Tetris is something. <laughs> Tetris is love. I, ag- yeah. I agree. It is known. Yeah. Uh, also, the nymph is here. Hi. I am the only one not wound up here, and no, I did not wind those two up. I've just no, been observing. <laughs> we have our own separate individual problems. Yeah. Uh, Patreon.com slash E1M1. All the cool behind the scenes early access stuff for only $5 mm-hmm. a month. Once I get around to editing uh, some stuff that Moon and I have recorded, a new show will be launching. So go check that out. Go subscribe now. $5 a month and you'll get it as soon as it comes out. Which is yep, hopefully soon. 25 episodes soon of ODNF, mm-hmm. uh, which you get early access. We just recorded another one today. Um, so that will be going up at the end of this month, too. If you want to get oh, mad boy. about opinions, too much. Old Dog yes. Netflix is your show. <laughs> oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. um, we discussed this quite considerably yesterday, uh, but people have now seemed to realize that my wife is the negative Nancy of the two of us. Okay. I'm the patient one. She is the negative Nancy when it comes to movies. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Oh, and definitely check out this month's episode because there is a pretty cool original discussion about superhero powers. Okay. No spoilers. Interesting. It's really funny. Yeah, go check it out. Patreon.com slash E1M1. My wife may have invented the best superhero power ever. I like it. I'm just saying. Uh, all right, Moon, let's start with you. what you've been playing this past week. Okay, so I got four games to talk about. Okay. I'm going to talk about... Three of them, and I'm going to leave the rest because I know somebody else has played more of this game than I have. Okay. So, we're going to start with Yakuza 0. Yeah. Um, I am now up to the point where I have to go to Osaka with Kiryu to go, and I'm assuming collect the woman who is blind, who is probably the one who is the owner of the parking lot, so that's my guess as to where that's going there. Right, right. Um, so my mission with him is go to Osaka. My current mission with him, though, is I'm going to take over all those stupid entertainment districts and get all of my skills up mm-hmm. because that's what I'm doing, including a bunch of mini games, a bunch of unfortunate mini games when it comes to the calling one, particularly. Still not a huge fan of that. <laughs> the the animation though of him picking up the phone and like the the cord spiraling like that, that looks is really incredible. Cool. And then you get to the awkwardness right after that fact. It's it's a weird it's one. Like, yeah, it's really 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 weird. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I'm doing a bunch of mini games with him, uh, trying to get as much money as I can. So basically, I can just upgrade him all the way and forget about it, kind of thing. Any any of the mini games you've enjoyed so far? I mean, the baseball one is impossibly difficult. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, I did get my turkey for turkey last Perfect. night. Perfect. Mm-hmm. So happy because now I've got another decent manager to manage my stuff. <laughs> I was gonna say that. The, what's the chicken's name? It's in, His name is Nugget. <laughs> Nugget, yes. Who I believe mm-hmm. was just announced as a summon for Yakuza 7. Of course. <laughs> because why not? I, I, you know, I would love it if he came down and just rained bowling balls on everybody. That'd be that great. would be perfect. Yeah. Because it's like perfectly referential. He's also a really good real estate manager. 
<laughs> yes, <laughs> Oddly he is. Enough. He is three stars, which so far the only other three star manager I have, I think, is the Burasara girl, mm, yeah. um, who is also a really good real estate manager. He's a real renaissance chicken. Yes, yeah. he is. Um, I'm in the middle right now of doing the pocket racer stuff. Okay. Along with trying to discover as many sub stories as I can, because I still haven't pa- found password protected, which I know I did on my first playthrough. Hmm. I don't know if I remember that one. That's the one where you've got to try and get access to the store, I think it is. But the dude's like, you want to buy from me? You've got to get the password correct. And then you've got to go around the corner, <laughs> the, beat like, up the guy. 35 character long password. Yes, yeah, I that forgot. thing. <laughs> I forgot yeah. about that one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I've still got to find that one. I've done like 19 sub-stories. It's like, where are they all hiding? Yeah, because there's like because 50, 75 of them? Yeah, yeah. and I've, lit- I've traveled 50 kilometers by foot. I know that because I got the reward for traveling 50 kilometers by foot. Right. The whole city <laughs> is like three square kilometers. <laughs> yeah, there's, not, there's not a ton there. Where are they hiding? Yeah. I don't know. Bright side is, I do have the iron stomach thing now, so I'm just going in all of the fast food chains, buying one of everything on the menu, yeah. eating it in one sitting, and then moving on to the next one so I can get those stupid CP. So I can then use the CP to get more stuff, to get more money. It, it's, That's right. It, this game is insane. <laughs> it's so good. I You found your loop. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm not kidding. While I was working on the turkey achievement, my loop was go do 10 frames. Go back, get my payouts, go do 10 frames, go back, get my payouts, go do 10 frames, go back and get my payouts. It was like, it was literally just do a mini game, get my collection, do a mini game, get my collection. Yeah. Like, that's all I'm doing right now. And then I got shook down for 189 million yen. So <laughs> I'm really annoyed. <laughs> uh, Majima seems so much easier to deal with those guys unless they get harder as you get further along them. I'm guessing it might be that one. I- yeah, I don't remember. Which um uh which of the stances are you using with Majima? Uh with Majima with the shakedown dudes, I use the baseball one because That's... as soon as I get two heat gauges, I just hit that white yeah. button and watch him smack him in the face. With Kiryu, it's like I don't know which I'm best with because the yeah. fast one doesn't do enough that it doesn't stun them at all. The wrestling one is just too open. Yeah. Like you just get hit all yep. the time. And then the base one doesn't feel like it does enough damage, so I need to get more money to upgrade that and do the stupid training and stuff. And say, like, okay, whatever, yeah. I'm just going to keep going. I use the bat oh. one with Majima the whole time because it, it's so strong and he's still uh-huh. so fast. Um, yes. I kind of liked the breakdance one with uh, Kiryu, but... It... Nope, that's Majima again. Oh, that's Majima yeah. again? Man, there's so yep. much in this game. The rush um, one Kiryu uses is, is Brawler, yeah. and then he's got the fast one where he does like the little right. box. And then he sways. has the beast one. I use the yes. the fast one, the the bob and weave one, because that that seemed to be let me like punch and punch and then roll out of the way and keep on moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can do like well, that's a lot of ahead. the issue with the bosses too. Is some of those guys have range, like you don't yes. think they can reach you, and they do no problem. So I yeah. mm-hmm. do a lot of dodging around in the rush. Yeah, or in the case of the um, shakedown guys, they just hit with a three sixty arc. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. just because He's got yep. six foot long arms. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh man. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm working my way through Yakuza Zero. Slowly but surely, enjoying it, having some fun. Uh, still a great game. Still loving it. Still trying to unlock everything as I go. It's so much content. It's like so much. I'm not getting like forty five hours into it again Mm -hmm. and it's like i'm still barely scratching the surface even though the end of the story is very rapidly approaching (laughs) i was thinking about getting the platinum in that game and then i realized i would have to play a um a significant amount of mahjong and i was like yeah no i'm good i'm okay that's the thing that's gonna kill me the mahjong and the shote because i'm good at chess i'm not good at weird chess i don't know the rules for yeah and like the game does have a lot of really great tutorials and like instructions about it, but they're 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 very complex games. I looked up mm-hmm. guides for how to play both of those, and apparently the what was it Shogun Shante whatever that mm-hmm. one is all scripted, where they'll all, oh, they'll always do with certain okay. movement stuff. I found that out while I was reading the one hundred and one guides for both of those games because I'd never played either one of them before. Yeah, um, Bajang, I didn't look into any further, so that one may be scripted as well to a point. Interesting. So, 
That's good. Oh, okay. So me. There's a lot of videos online. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there might be a 1,000 gamer score coming this way. No, there won't be because I've got to beat it on legendary difficulty. Oh, Thanks. yeah, never mind. Just don't wear that calming um, towel. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I hate that stupid thing so much. Angry about the calming towel. Is there an achievement for beating the game only using the calming towel? No. <laughs> oh, thank God, no. no. On legendary. This is not, <laughs> this is not dead, by ri- dead, sorry, dead by Rising. Dead, dead by Rising? Dead by... Uh, <sighs> this isn't Dead Rising, where it's like, here you go, 72 hours, enjoy your Red Ring Dex box. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Uh, but no, I, I like Yakuza 0. I'm liking the stupidity of it. Um, I still don't know if that was Chow Yun Fat. You, you pretty much confirmed it was, but I still don't know who I, he is. I thought I it was, yeah. Back to Majimi yet. Um, but yeah, Yakuza 0. I will continue slowly but surely playing it. Um, my <clears throat> flavor of the month for comfort food gaming is actually our. Um, we rogue like it game, yep. so I've been playing a poop ton of that and watching Netflix here and there. Um, ooh, let's see, Dead by Friday did that. Uh, played some Dead by Friday. We got the new killer and the new map. Who's the guy who uses a chain shotgun? Like, okay, Very interesting. Okay, sure. He fires chains from what looks like a hunting rifle, basically at you, and then he kind of does the get over here. Great. Like, it's a little bit dumb. Right. It's a little bit hilarious. And his map is like a Texas saloon, like in the Wild West with the rolling tumbleweeds and everything. Okay. It's like, sure, why not? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but yes, credit to my wife on that one, actually, because while we were all theorizing who the killer was going to be, she was like, dudes, the last one was an OC, original character. The one before that was licensed. So this one's going to be an original character. And then the next one will probably be licensed because they do license, OC, OC, license. Gotcha. The way they, they release it. And sure enough, it's an original character who looks... He looks like a dead version of the Gunslinger from okay. the Stephen King books. Right. It's just like old, white, long hair dude. It's like, cool, sure, whatever. Uh, pretty successful night, whole bunch of escapes. Honestly, it was just chill out and chat with the boys kind of time. Um, yeah. And giggle stupidly as we came across two really good nurses who is the hardest killer in the game to play. Mm. And we faced two really, really good ones. So that was fun. And on a thematic point note, oh. uh, I started uh, Two Point Hospital. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, now's the time, apparently. <laughs> just why not? So, yeah, that's Theme Hospital. Yeah. Just, like, they, just <laughs> they just like they just picked up the design document and said, oh, yeah, l- just do this again. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife started playing it before me and she actually said to me, so this feels very British, and I was like, well, yeah, it's made by the same guy who made Theme Hospital, and he's British, I think, so yeah, yeah it's about right, including all of the, I'm pretty sure the PA woman is the exact same woman. <laughs> it, it's, it sounds a lot like the exact same woman, where it's, it's like, it's sending me back to 1997 or whatever in my parents' uh upstairs office and we're just playing theme hospital and like yeah this is uh-huh. you you made it again which is yep. really great like and the best thing is like the controller interface is really solid yeah. there are some little bits here and there i'm not a bit not a big fan of but in general it controls well it tutorials really 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 well yep like there's the zooming out and buying plots of land like it's got a good solid interface good movement speed the diseases are all hilarious. Mock Star being my favorite so far. <laughs> because why not have Freddie Mercury like coming into the hospital again and again and again? Yep. And in the idle animation, they do the walk around with the microphone without the bass that Eddie does. <laughs> That's really good. Well, Freddie, I should say. Like it's so good. Like <clears throat> they nailed all that stuff. Yeah. And like the the voiceover bits are good like the it's that perfect management sim where everything is just balanced just right yep uh so good on them they made theme hospital again and called it two point hospital and i'm now up to my third location i think because it's me i have to get three stars in every location before i move on naturally Mm -hmm. it's a plants versus zombies problem where it's like uh, two i got i gotta do it again i only got two stars exactly if i just change one more thing i can take that two and turn it into a three and it's perfect just gotta optimize exactly optimize and efficiency right that's what you need every single time uh but my that's pretty much all i've been playing this week there is one more game like i mentioned but i'm gonna let somebody else 
Boston. Uh, talk about that first because okay. I'm guessing he's played more of this than me based on everything I've played so far. Okay. Uh, so, Nimp, what have you been playing? So, I've been playing Division 2. and Yeah, man, me too. I'm starting to develop a weird love-hate relationship with this game again. <laughs> yeah, man, me yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> um, made it to level 16 now. Um, I had, I was doing one mission on the east side of the map. Basically everything on the east side of the map of the White House I have completed. I'm just finishing up main Mm. missions. I think I have one more, or no, I did do, I finished the last main mission on that side. So now I have to go to the west side now to Mm -hmm. where Mm -hmm. everything's like level 15 or whatever. But the level 13 mission that I was doing over there, I had this guy just like spamming me with invites to join his game. (sighs) And I kept denying it, denying it. And it was getting so annoying, I was trying to figure out how to block the guy. <laughs> right. Accidentally accepted the game invite while trying to figure out how to block him. So it took me out of my main mission that I was doing and put me into his oh, game. No. But luckily, the guy had started the same mission. Oh, okay. So it's like, well, screw it. He was only he was like maybe five minutes behind where I was at. It's like, all right, I already know what's oh, okay. happening. And now you got I, two of yeah. you, so motor right So through that it. was kind of my thing. It's like, all right, fine, we will do this because I'm annoyed. And if I back out of your game now, I'm going to have to restart this mission anyway. So. Yeah, you've yeah. trapped me. Yeah. <laughs> so went through, finished that, um, dropped out of his game because I didn't realize I was looking at the map after we finished the mission. And all of a sudden I noticed like all the control points that I had been working on were like all red all of a sudden. Yeah. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? I thought these weren't supposed to turn yet. <laughs> Come to find yep. out that it was because I was still in his game and he didn't do the control points. So when I got out of his game yep. and back into my game, I looked at the map and everything was the way it should have been. So <laughs> Boy, I, I played this a little bit with um, Bill Severd uh, from the community. Um, and when he, I hopped in his game... It raised the level of the entire game up to level 38 because I'm already 40. Mm-hmm. So he's mm-hmm. getting like 200, like 25,000 XP per mission. It's so like every mission we're doing, he's gaining a level. Like we played yep. for, I think it was two hours the other day, gained five levels Jeez. in those two hours. It's like, geez, okay. This is apparently the, the real way to, to power it up. Doing it borderline style. They're just dragging somebody behind you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just don't look at any enemies. I'll just bring you yeah. up. You yeah. sit here. I will go on. But anyway, um, so yeah. the last mission that I did was reconnecting the was it the HSD network um, where you have yes. to move the satellite and all that stuff. And that one I was doing by myself. Uh, nobody else. That's a tough one. Yeah, it sucked. I didn't die. Yeah. But that was stupid hard at the end. I had no armor left. I had, all yeah. I had left was that little sliding health bar that you have after armor. And that thing kept going back and forth because as soon as I would find <laughs> cover, more people would show up and start shooting at me from different directions. I've got yeah, like my three dr- different directions. <laughs> yeah, I've got my drone flying yeah. around trying to give me support. I've got the turret stationed by me. That way you can cover me while I'm trying to hide and recover. And then the stupid... Uh, what are they? Epic enemies or whatever? They basically walk around in a bomb suit and have a grenade launcher, setting everything on fire. Yeah, the heavies. Yeah, yeah that yep. thing can hit you. Like I'm underneath this platform. I have cover <laughs> yep. over my head, and the thing can still shoot you. And he's yep. on like a third mm-hmm. story or something like that. It's like how this is BS. What the heck? So those, I'm, those guys are yep. really tough. I'm surprised I made it my first time through because there are several times I should have died. A lot of issues with button commands where I would hit A to hide behind cover. And it's like, nope, you jump over it. So now I'm in the middle of all these people that I was trying to not be in front of. (laughs) Hey, everyone. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So that kind of sucked. But finally got through that mission. I'm back at the White House upgrading my stuff right now. It keeps telling me to go check out the dark zones. But then it keeps telling me that I don't have the person to check out the dark zone. So I don't know why it keeps telling me to go to the dark zone. (laughs) Yeah, God, there's so much of that in this game right now because yeah. like they change the lock progression. Process is not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't want to do Dark Zones anyway. I wasn't planning on it anyway. So yeah, yeah, I, I think it's one of those like at one of the settlements, one of the missions you did, you can now bring that person back to the White House. It's like how you did the crafting station. Yeah, um, yeah, you'll save someone and they'll come back, and it's it's a little more complicated than it needs to be. Yeah, because I think right now I'm just missing three or four people. 
Okay. For the mm-hmm. White House, and then I'll have everybody. But nice. So the next game that I played, picked this up this weekend because it was on sale. Call of Duty: Modern Warfare. Mm. Um, because wait, which one? Oh wait, I did play that this weekend. The, uh, actual, the newest one. Yeah, the actual Call of Duty game that came out that also has what's the other thing called? Warzone. Uh, yeah, Warzone. Yeah, I I played mm-hmm. some Warzone this week. Um. Warzone is actually free. You do not need to own yeah. a copy of this game to play Warzone. You just download it. The problem is, though, that when you download Warzone, you are downloading the entire Call of Duty game. So it's I, a 99 I, gig game. Yeah, I downloaded yeah, a 99 a, gig free game. It's like, the, this is there rough. is a reason. Yeah. There's a reason I did not play this game this week. Yeah. Because I don't have the hard drive <laughs> yeah. space. Yep. But the... And oh, everything I hear from that game, especially in regards to the PlayStation 4 side of updating that game, is hilariously stupid. Oh, yeah. yeah. I had my PS4 yeah. on rest all day while I slept, woke up at 6 in the afternoon, and it was at like 88% out of 99, <laughs> or 88 gigs out of 99, mm-hmm. and I still had other Wait stuff to download the- onto it. <laughs> Wait until you get a patch and you have to re-download the whole game again. Yeah, mm. screw that. Um, yeah, there's like one game I I have seen that happen. Yeah, yeah. Most PS4 games don't do that. Most PS4 PS4 games do the horrible copying thing. However, yep. that yes is the worst. Yeah, I think from what I understand, this does both because mm. literally they have been getting a lot of flack um, from their users in regards to yo, dude. I'm hitting my bandwidth caps, and the only game I play is Call of Duty. Yeah. What are you doing to me? Right. Yep. It's like fun. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll just uninstall it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I I bought the actual game, and the reason why that's so big too is that if you decide to actually buy Call of Duty, it's already installed on your console, so you're just unlocking it, so you don't have that's to download bad. anything else. Whatever. That's, that's, that's kind of nice. Um. Story for this game is just a, your general military American hoorah over the good guys, blah blah right. blah. There's Red, white, and blue. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. There's something <laughs> that we're trying to stop. Although surprisingly, right. there's only one American that you play as. The rest of it, so far, you're playing um, British people, which oh, is interesting. interesting. So that's cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, story is just—it's a Call of Duty story. You don't <laughs> right, like, you don't come yeah, to the yeah. game for the story apparently. Yeah. <clears throat> um, mm-hmm. Multiplayer. I played a lot of the multiplayer, just the regular stuff that they had, just to get back into the game because I haven't played. God, I don't think I've really played a Call of Duty game until World at War or since then. I know I've played Black wow, Ops okay. Three, but I didn't really play Black Ops Three. It just happened to be free. <laughs> so I played a lot of the multiplayer just to get back into the game. Um, it's pretty good. They made a lot of good changes since, what, six mm. years ago, being the last time I really <laughs> right. played a Call of Duty game. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of like just small stuff. Like you can still, if you're aiming down sights, you can still change out a magazine. It doesn't go, like it doesn't pull your reticle away or your weapon away while you're changing oh, your magazine cool. out and stuff like that. So you can keep an eye on what's going on down the road or whatever. <laughs> While this is happening. Mm-hmm. So just small dumb stuff like that. Um, the War Zone, uh, for those of you that don't know, is the Battle Royale of Call of Duty. It's supposedly the worst a, kept secret. <laughs> yeah. It's supposedly a little bit different from Blackout, which I guess was the last Call of Duty's Battle Royale yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Not entirely sure how it's different. I don't know. But... The people who had been pestering me online, friends of mine, who wanted me to really play this game, finally met up with them Friday night, or uh, Saturday, all day Saturday, played for probably about a good six, seven hours by accident, (laughs) because it was definitely that syndrome of, all right, we did this one more, you know, whatever. So the, the very first game that we did, I don't know what's going on. I've played, you know, I've played Apex, I've played... Crap, I can't think of the PUBG. There we go. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's because nobody talks about the game anymore. Um, yeah. So I get the basics of what I'm supposed to be doing and where we're going and all that. Um, and I'm a lot more cautious than apparently everybody else is because <laughs> we dropped into, I think it was the lumber, lumber yard. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm just walking around, looking inside buildings, picking up items, stuff, checking things out, look, you know, figuring out where my map is, what each button does. Scooping up money. Yeah, just screwing yeah. around. And next thing yeah. I know, everyone comes on the radio is like, hey, we're dead. <laughs> and I'm the only one on my team still alive. I'm like, oh. Great. All right. So I have Did all Did you this- go through the tutorial? Yeah, they forced you to before you. Yeah, okay. So. I, I do have to give them credit. Tutorial is actually pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty Especially fast. if you've never played a Call of Duty game before. Like, it will tell you, it will teach you all the, the very basic, here's how to shoot guns. Yep. Now, here's how to apply armor, and here's how to buy stuff. Yeah, it's like a quick okay. five, ten minute, you know, yeah, it's very camp fast. scenario thing. Cool. But... Yeah, Apex updated there, so they've got a firing range now as well. Ooh, with, cool. Um, like good damaging like hit numbers that come up as well yeah. with all this stuff okay. so it's really really good update for that too well so after they tell me that they're all dead i'm like all right cool so i go to the shop location because you can buy people back for respawns if they screw if because when you die you go to the gulag and then you have a chance yep. to fight one-on-one in what is the rocks shower room yeah not not mm-hmm. the wrestler the movie right uh, <laughs> so you have a chance to do one on one. Whoever wins that responds into the game automatically. If you lose, your party or group or team or whatever has to buy you back. And the prices for how much you cost to respawn vary depending on how far into the game you are. Mm. Um, so I had to buy back both my people because they both died in the gulag. And they basically just get drop, air dropped onto you. And then they parachute down to whatever location they can get to. And you start all okay. over again with just a pistol. So, I do all that. As soon as they come in, of course, you've got these two things flying in the sky. So, (laughs) everyone sees it. And all of a sudden, there's just, like, teams coming at us. And I'm, like, the only one with a real weapon. And I actually hold my own pretty well. Nice. And I think we got... We got all the way to the end. We were in the last circle. I was the only one alive again because (laughs) they got ambushed because they wanted to go in one direction. I told them, no, that seems like a really dumb idea. So I went in a different direction and they all got killed again. (laughs) Dude, dude, come on. Rule number one with battle royales is no matter what happens, you got to roll with your homie. No, mm. and I say that as someone whose wife likes to go on random tangents and explore <laughs> no. areas without me. because these are random tangents that I'm like these. This is a bad idea. You are making a poor life decision right now, and I will not right. follow you down this path. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So they make some short life decisions. That's fine. Right. Which, which right. is you, why you I go down. Which is them. why in my first game. I placed third place in this thing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, and it keeps turning into this thing where it's like every time, like this last one of the games we got in, they get, were in a firefight where they were hiding behind a truck and they were trying to shoot like these guys across the thing. And none of us have long range weapons. And I'm like, Hey, this seems like a really bad scenario. Like I'm seeing other people starting to pip up on the radar. We're causing a lot of noise. We're going to get ambushed real hard here in a second. We should run. So everyone's mm-hmm. like, all right, yeah, cool. We should do that. Get in the truck. Well, none of us can get in the truck. So I'm like, screw it. You start driving forward. I'm just going to run in front of the truck until we get to this brick uh, wall so I can hide behind that. Nobody did that. They all got out of the truck. I was the only one that ran. So <laughs> <laughs> I get you know, to the brick wall, notice that I'm the only one there, and I turn around, and I see an RPG come in from this hill that nobody was looking at and blows up the truck that they were all using for cover. So I was the only <laughs> one left alive again. And I'm like... We had a plan, guys. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's it's been an interesting game. A lot of a lot of issues. I've died a lot of dumb times and ways just because yeah. like I even I was getting to the point where it's like you walk up stairs and there's a guy there and you have that freakish moment where it's like, Oh hey, there's somebody here and then you're dead. <laughs> yeah. I do have to say they, they do have some interesting sort of modifications on the the battle rail formula i do like um i do like the gulag thing i think that's a cool idea um i do like the idea of calling in a drop and having yep. that be the way that you get like a a preset loadout so if, if mm-hmm. you do have the the risk of here's this giant crate with red smoke coming out of the top of it but you can get a comp a, like a really solid complementary loadout out of it so if you want to 
get the best stuff, there will be a little bit of risk reward there. Well, and there, um, mm-hmm. there's side mission stuff that you can do in the game too, where you can pick That's up really recon, cool. which will show you either it'll show you crate locations on the map, so that way you know where to go to get more um, ammunition or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or they also have a recon where it will show you where the circle will close next. So that way you yeah. can already start heading there before the circle's even at that point yet. Yep. And then they have other contracts just... where you can – it'll target either a team or a specific player and it'll give them a threat level depending on how well that they've been doing. And if you take out – if you take out that person or team, you get a bunch of money. If you survive, you get a bunch of money depending on what your threat level is. Nice. So mm-hmm. there's all kinds of extra stuff in there that you can be doing. It's, and, it's nice stuff for when you're in the circle early and there's, like, not a lot to do. You can do some stuff to get some money and get some extra intel. Yeah. I think that's really smart. So it's pretty interesting. I like it. But yeah. I don't think I would jump back into any other Battle Royale games. It's not really my speed. I mean, it was fun because I was doing it with people that I know and we were just sitting there shooting the S the entire time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to play this by myself. I just, yeah. I'm not that competitive. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so the next game that I played is Hollow Knight. Yeah. Because Whoa. that's on sale for $7, 6 or $7 right now on PSN. Yeah. So I picked it up. It's always something I've been kind of looking at. Just never got around to it. And I'm in a lull right now. So it's like, ah, $7. Mm-hmm. It's hard to pass up. Yeah. Yeah, you got five days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I have developed a lot of issues with this game just because mm, I couldn't uh-huh. figure there were some things that I just couldn't figure out at first. Um mm-hmm. cause, don't worry, that's the same for Yeah, everybody. yeah, you're you're having the real Hollow Knight experience there. <laughs> yeah, because I bought a map, realized there's nothing on it and it's only a section of it. I'm like, all right, cool. So mm-hmm. I managed uh-huh. to figure out that I had to buy a quill to have your guy yep. fill out the map. Yep. All right, cool. So by the quill, map's still not getting filled out. I'm like, what is going on? So I happen to go rest at a bench, and then it says, oh, map update in progress, map complete. I'm like, oh, cool. Mm-hmm. So I pull out the map. It's like, okay, now it's showing me. So apparently I have to sit at a bench to have the map fill out. Yep. Still don't have any mm-hmm. icons on it, so I go back up to the shop, <laughs> buy, like, all the Nothing icon not. things that it has. Yeah. <laughs> and now my map is completely filled out with a bunch of icons and I can see where I'm at and all that fun stuff. Nice. The biggest issue that I've had so far is every time I go to look at that stupid map, a stalactite will fall on top of me. <laughs> and it actually, because I got to an area that I had cleared out. I was like, all right, cool. Stopped in a spot. Nothing was happening. Pull out my map, get hit by a stalactite. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. What that the first real area is yeah. <laughs> so yeah. like, all right, and it's like That's every so time good. I think I've checked my map five times, and I've even done it where it's like I I'll wiggle my character on the screen just to see if anything moves. Right. I don't see anything, and as soon as I pull off that map, get hit by a stalactite. <laughs> it's so good. I yeah. think it's rigged. Yeah. It's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> um, You're cursed. Yeah. So then I was uh, trying to figure out because you can attack, you know, up, left, right, down. Mm-hmm. Attacking down, I had the biggest issue with, so I did a lot of practicing with that. Yeah, it's yep. it's it's weird. Yeah, yeah, but the timing on it is really particular. Well, it's because yep. you can like you, you can it, bounce at different it, it, heights. It, the pogo and, is super helpful. Yeah, and so I figured out that I can I can bounce off of needles because yep. I did that by accident. <laughs> so, yep. um. But then the biggest issue that I had was I was fighting a moth guy with a shield. And yeah, I yeah. was having an issue because I'd be able to bounce off of him once, bounce off of him twice. And that second time I would go up higher than mm. I did before. And so that kept throwing right. me off. And the guy has reach and he attacks twice. Yes. And yep. he can also do a charge attack. So that kind of sucks. So I'm trying to figure this out while fighting this thing for the first time. And he yeah. killed me. <laughs> yep. Um. Which brought up the other cool thing of going back and basically doing the Dark Souls thing of finding your soul, having to fight your soul. Yep. I haven't lost yet, but I'm assuming that thing gets a lot harder as time goes on. Because I already noticed that it started using some like a skill that I just picked up. The 
Yeah, yeah, it gets better time. as you get better. Yeah. It, it knows yeah. all it your skills. It will start using your abilities and stuff, but I wouldn't say it ever gets, like, difficult yeah. to get. Oh, okay. yeah. Unless you die in a really tough area, then you deal with that and all the stuff that killed you. That gets a little hairy, but your your shade never really gets super tough. Okay. Because I've, I've been able to... The, when I died at the Mothman, it was above the Mothman, but I was able to lure it closer to me without activating yeah. him. Yeah. So yeah. I've been able to get away with that a couple of times, and that hasn't really been an issue, so that's been pretty sweet. Um, but I have beaten the giant beetle with the Morning Star, some yep. giant fly mother thing that once <laughs> you kill it, like a bunch of babies pop out of it or whatever. Yeah, those are uh, like the the real the two first real bosses. Yeah, the Morning Star guy was kind of a pain. I managed to beat him in one go, but it was just mm. trying to figure him out, and I walked into him by accident without meaning to. So I was already low on health, couldn't really focus <laughs> to get more health. Yeah, so yeah it's yeah, like that, not enough time to heal. Yeah. yeah. Um, fought the Moth guy, which I thought was a boss, but turns out it's not. Those are just standard enemies now, apparently. So. Yep. The, and hey, they suck. suck throughout the whole game. Oh, great. <laughs> yes, they do. Because <laughs> there was two of them that I had to get by to get into this next area. And I basically yeah. took the upper ramp, ran by them, and just dropped down the hole. <laughs> called it there good. you go. You figured out Hollow Knight yep. Hole. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I fought what looks to be a female equivalent of Hollow Knight. Yep. Pin, isn't it? Is Needle? No. Needle um, I don't remember her name. I don't know. I wasn't given a name yet. Yeah, so. you'll you, you'll find it out later. She stars in the sequel. Um, oh, okay. There's a I sequel to Hollow Knight. The, the DL the DL sequel is what he's talking <laughs> oh. about. Yeah, well, it was supposed to be a DLC, and they're like, "Whoops, we made it too big." So now it's standalone, and it's even bigger than Hollow Knight. It's like, ah, crap. Okay, <laughs> yay, mm-hmm. but also, oh boy. Sweet. So I do have the Moth Cloak. I think it's called, so I can do the dashing and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yep, yep. And that's about where I left off right now because it. I started going through this greenery area. Um, there's been a couple places where I've walked into an area, and there's been like a giant beetle with a club that yeah. basically can 360 you no matter where you're at. Yep. So I've left mm-hmm. that that one alone. There was another one that I walked into that looks like it has like a maw just sitting there on the map, and you get kind of close to it, and all these eyes show up, and it shrieks really loud. I was like, no, not dealing with this right now, and walked back out. <laughs> yep, I forgot um, about that, yeah. There's another one where um, further down to the level, you start finding, like, the stonework area, and it slowly gets darker and darker. And I got into this one area where it's, like, super dark, and you can barely see. I'm like, nope, walking back out of this area. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, so, yeah, really enjoying Hollow Knight so far. You made a lot of progress. I gotta say. Mm-hmm. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Wait for the wall. I was gonna say. Yeah. Everybody hits a wall. So you're late <laughs> yep. It's yeah. It's gonna suck, but it's yeah. fun. I really enjoy Metroidvania games. I just yep never get the chance to really play them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh well, boy, do you have another thirty-five hours ahead of you? Yeah, yeah, I know. And I think this one came with all the DLC too. That are, are the really PS4 the original one does. console version. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So Void Heart or whatever. Yeah, the Void Heart mm-hmm. edition. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that has all the DLC. Yep. So I got all that to look forward to, apparently. God, all that DLC is so hard. It's going to be great. <laughs> oh, holy yes, Christ. It is. I got halfway through the Grim Troop and I I gave up. It, it's just that boss is stupid hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, And then <clears throat> the last game that I have is actually more of an announcement than a game because just before the podcast started, community member Angel I gifted me a game that mm. I will be talking about next week. Mm. Cuz I have to download Elite Dangerous? It. No. I own Elite Dangerous on every console except for the PS4. <laughs> Please. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I will talk about that next week. Okay. I just wanted to give a shout what out. What game? Oh, no, it's a special announcement. The secret. Yeah. Secret. Does it does it have the letters R, G, J, and P no. in the genre title? Nope. <laughs> I had to do that math myself. I was like, oh God, I don't know what he's... Oh, okay, I got it. Okay, yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, there's a new season of uh, Destiny 2 out. Um, not really going to talk about it because it's kind of the same as the other seasons. Um, 
this will be the theme of the first two games I've been playing. Uh, brand new season came out. The community is on fire. I'm really enjoying it. Um, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Yeah. When is the community not on fire for Destiny? About the, the two weeks before a new season comes out. It is all like springtime fields and flowers. Like the promise yeah. of the future. Oh, this next season is going to be, how dare you release this next season? Like, it's just, the cycle continues. Um, yeah. I'm enjoying it so far. Um, I, you log in every day. You do a couple bounties. There's a, there's a fun new um, public event called Seraph Towers. You basically do a tower defense thing. And if nobody takes over the tower... All these balls shoot out, toss those at a thing, 100%, you, you get some loot. It's the same so Is this like Gladiators or Krypton Factor for my UK fans? No. Like the game show thing? No, that'd be great. Uh, no, not yet. Um, so that's the the PvE side, the PvP side, Trials of Osiris is back. Uh, the Destiny 1 <laughs> favorite uh, weekend competitive PvP uh, thing. We won't talk about the Destiny 2 one. Um it seems like they kind of brought it back intact, and no one is happy about it. So, I don't know what'll make you guys happy. Um, apparently nothing will, ever. Yep. Yeah. Um, I Welcome didn't, to 2020. I didn't try it yet, because um, there's an issue for the first weekend where... Quick tangent. Um, every season has a seasonal artifact. The higher you level up that artifact, the more additional light level power bonus whatever you want to call it it will give your character so like right now my uh power levels at 972 i think but i have plus five on my artifact so i'm really 977 um that wasn't disabled the first weekend <laughs> this this last oh, past weekend so you're seeing a lot of <clears throat> thousand and twenty power level hanging out in there mm-hmm. and such so i decided let let all of them get their fun in i'm not super great at pvp anyway so first opening weekend is not where i belong i'll try in in future weeks um, i hate rank resets on most pvp games because it's like oh the season is over ranks have been reset right now do you qualify matches again it's like oh they to use the, the, the siege terms there's a team of six plats who are just trying to get their rank back, and it's the first week since the ranks reset, and they're literally stomping. <laughs> it's me with my first gun. Was like, how do I shoot? Oh god, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, I think trials coming back is going to be really good once the community settles into it, um, and I think once the really sweaty teams maybe kind of get sick of it and move on to other stuff like they have been for a long a lot of people that are like coming back to destiny 2 for the first time in six months uh that has been really funny where it's like wait i don't have enough light level to compete in this it's like yeah man you there's anti-cheat in here like you you got to be 960 to get in there and you you, you can't boost that so mm-hmm. yeah it's interesting i still enjoy destiny 2 probably won't talk about it for the rest of the season so See you in three months. Um, it should be. Division 2. There's a new season. Uh, their season 1 uh, just started. Uh, I forgot to talk about this when Nymp was talking about it. Um, I This is really is pretty solid how they have it going right now. They have, in Warlords in New York, they have that manhunt system where you're like, you take out the four people and you take out the dude. Um, they've carried that over to DC for the season. So they have seasonal manhunts. The very first one, they have like a new one every three weeks. And then if you do all of those, you can do the the final one. You get a new skill. It's like EMP sticky bomb. I think if you take out the final one, um, I did the first one sort of over the course of this week. I, I think it's a really great system because I enjoy playing this game. The community disagrees. I don't care. Um, Shocker. Yeah, division community is unhappy about something weird. Um, basically, how the first one worked is in three areas, you needed to capture three control points, do a special bounty, and do like a reprise of a mission. Do all of those. Do a uh, stronghold, which for anyone that doesn't, doesn't play, it's like their equivalent of dungeons. At that point, you say, oh, we found the guy. He's over there. Do a special bounty to take him out. 
get a whole bunch of really great loot, and then in another couple weeks you'll you'll do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, part of why I enjoy it is because I just like playing the division. Um, I'm getting a bunch of great gear, kind of solidifying my build as it goes right now. Um, the leveling for the season pass feels really good. Um, I wasn't doing anything special, and I and I honestly didn't play a ton this week. And I think I'm level 17 out of 100, so it it feels very very pretty quick. Um, the rewards so far seem really great, like named weapons, gear sets, um, apparel keys, um, arm patches, and stuff like that. Like, it all feels like uh, it's the inverse of the Destiny 2 Season Pass. Destiny 2 Season Pass feels v- often largely unrewarding because um, mm-hmm. the stuff you're getting is stuff you have thousands of already, where it's like, we gave you five legendary shards. It's like, cool, I have 7,000 of those. So that. <laughs> that's not going to make a difference um you know when um you're getting uh resource caches for the season pass and division two you're getting like a hundred of each resource which you're using to craft and the recalibration library i talked about last week like th- this system feels like it's feeding itself pretty well um and i'm just i just have a lot of fun playing division two so i might not play it a lot until uh the next manhunt comes and then maybe i'll play it a lot for that week but um i don't know it that feels pretty solid uh atelier riza uh play a little bit more of that i'm really happy with how the game introduces you to the alchemy system which it should because that that's the game um it seems complicated at the beginning but pretty quickly like you and your the two dumb buddies you got are going out and fighting monsters and getting parts from them and getting rare drops from monsters. When that popped up on the screen, I was like, I'm I'm really in trouble. Um, And it all, I played probably maybe another two or three hours this week. So not, not a lot. Um, But man, does that game feel really good to just, the battle system is, is fine. uh, But the crafting and the gathering and all that stuff feels really great. Um, I made a Mm -hmm. scythe. So now I can harvest things instead of just beating them with a rod. Yep. Um, so yeah, I, Nimp already talked a lot about Italia Rise, and I don't have a lot to add on it onto it other than it. It yes, it is that good. Wait until you get uh, into your loop. Yeah, I'm. I'm sort of. I feel like. I feel like I'm like right on the cusp of it, really grabbing me, and I. I feel like that's gonna. That's gonna be dangerous once it does. Uh, Because it's very kid friendly. So, yeah, yeah, not a lot going on. It's not even in English. So, she doesn't even even understand it. It's great. (laughs) The best of both worlds. Uh, But lastly, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I'm assuming, Moon, this is the game you're talking about. Uh, This is the game. Number one, let's talk about Xbox performance. Very poor. Uh, how does it run in the let Xbox ta- One? Let me talk about the Xbox One X performance. Yeah, how's that run? Ooh, kind of poor. Great, fantastic. PC performance, fantastic. Uh, load times okay. are great. Super, super solid 60 frames. I don't have a three to four second black screen when I exit out of the map, which is positive. Uh, one to one and a half seconds on the X. Yeah. Rid- um, some of those zones are real framey like yep. real framey I, I, I don't have a problem if a game is 30 or 60 frames we've talked about this on mm-hmm. the show before Same. I care when the f- frame rate is like 15 or 45 like when it's fluctuating 30 frames between mm-hmm. screens that's when I start getting really sick um, yeah. I have a little hacky workaround on uh, so Microsoft implementation of Game Pass games on PC sucks. I cannot find yes. the EXE specifically because they go to the stupid Windows file and God, they, the stupid they just disappear. Like I can't find yeah, the EXE. They, do, they literally don't have any EXE yeah. in most cases. It's, God, it's, it's a the shell worst. prompt. So I have a it's so dumb. I have a hacky workaround in the Moonlight streaming program that will allow me to play uh, Game Pass games. Uh, my Steam link. Moon, I will I remind me and I will tell you how to do it. Um, so that has worked really well. No frame rate issues, no latency issues, none of that stuff. Well, out of curiosity, was it the shortcut grabber? 
where you no. create a shortcut to it and then grab the shortcut because that works too sometimes just so you know yeah no that that wasn't working for me so i just i did a much hackier work around that we'll just i'll tell you later yeah. um uh boy they made hollow knight Yep. <laughs> they just Oh boy. We talked okay. about Two Point Hospital lifting a design document and making they just they took ev- they took literally everything from Hollow Knight and they put it in Ori. There is mm-hmm. Pogo jumping from a sword you now have. There is a yeah. hold guy. Yep. There's a hold the button to heal yourself thing. There is yeah, the map guy. There is um you get the charms, the pins. You get the that pins. You get in Hollow Knight now suddenly exist in here. Yeah, like yeah, you you have pins. You have a whole bunch of weird people in a gibberish language that are all over the map that are going to talk to you. Um, I I just I, I couldn't be happier <laughs> because mm-hmm. the first like, Ori was. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, like the whole thing with the whole thing with Metroidvania games is they evolve. The good yeah. ones they evolve really really well. That's why Symphony of the Night is widely regarded as one of the best because it took things like Super Metroid and just ran with it yeah and took it that next brand step. new and then you got the same thing that happens later on with like the ds um castlevania games are again yeah going above and beyond i think ori was an amazing metroidvania game it took the concept of a, of a metroidvania did it really well yep but then it added the best looking metroidvania of all time yep. And possibly one of the best soundtracks of all time. And it was a little short. That would be my only, like, positive yeah. and negative. It was a, It was kind of a, a shortened experience. Yeah. And then Hollow Knight comes out after that. And Hollow Knight changes the game in about 50 different ways. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. look how good this game is. Yeah. This is what Metroidvania should be. And now Ori and has a, a nail. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't be happier. Let's talk about... First off, soundtrack, a banger again. An mm-hmm. incredible soundtrack. Visuals, somehow even better than the first one. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Have you run into the giant fro- stone frog guy? Ye- the one where you put the stones in? Mm. In the eyes? No, there's like a... I've, got, I've, I've, got, I've done the statue part where you open yep. the pathway. I haven't got to him yet. Okay. He looks incredible. There's just such... Like you said, the first Ori game looked really great. This one, they're just like, all right, we have a style, we have a, a theme, like we we know what we're doing. We're just gonna amp that up uh, to a serious degree. Um, mm-hmm. This game is really good. I <laughs> just, I've been waiting yeah. for the the Hollow Knight sequel, and apparently Ori has been waiting for really. me all along. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I just got my dash to give you an idea of where I'm up to. I okay. literally just got my dash. Um, I started it today, and I was like, "I'll play an hour." Four hours later, <laughs> yeah. was like, that was my thing okay. too. Whereas, I, I really, I do have to say, I like that they give you the sword, the heal, the dash, and the double jump Straight really away. quickly. the The thing that I just got is the um, circular thing. No, it's the thing in. Uh, it's returning from the first one where you basically swap with a bullet. It's basically like a a teleport jump. Yeah. I got that again. Um, and there's some really great stuff for people like us that played the first Ori, where it's like, all right, cool. I see two of those plants and two mm-hmm. of those enemies that spit the purple things. I bet there's something cool up there. And it's like, if you use those skills you remember from the first one, it's like, I'm going to teleport four or five times to get up to this thing. Hey, now I have more health. Like, yep. there's a lot of cool hidden stuff around everywhere that the first game did but i like that even if you haven't played the first one you'll eventually go back and be like oh okay cool yeah i can i can get up there but if you play the first one it's like yeah now i can just zip 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 and then um, the map on this is incredible map on this is really good the fact that you can hit the try the y button uh, and just hit details and it shows you what those logos are yep it's like here is a ground pound point. Yep. There you go. Here is it. Here is a this. Here is a that. Yeah. It's like thank you. I I haven't really done too much with the hub yet. I get the impression that I don't even have the hub yet. You've already gone through there. It's it was the uh, yeah, it's the bit with the guy looking onto the windmill. Yes, or the, that area. The big yeah. Ching. yeah. Yeah. It seems very much like like Hollow Knight. You're gonna run into people out in the world and be like, hey man, you why don't you 
come on back to town. Like, I, I got some cool stuff there. Mm-hmm. Um, I already saw the upgrade, dude. He was like, yeah, I just wish I had a place to settle down. It's like, yeah, it's like, I got, I got a place for, well, and there's one upgrade too, like, like Hollow Knight, you're picking up some sort of ore around the place mm-hmm. and the yep. item description is like, um, very useful in upgrading buildings. And I was like, come on, just, just give me the town already. <laughs> like, you have Dirt Mouth mm-hmm. really early in Hollow Knight and that's great, but like, get me my Dirt Mouth. Um, but yeah, I had, I knew I would like Ori and the Will of the Wisps just because it's another Ori game. And I, the first one was just, like Moon talked about it, it's just a very incredibly well done Metroidvania that had a, a couple of cool ideas. It didn't reinvent anything like Axiom Verge did, where it's like, you don't have a double jump. You don't have a dash. Like, you don't have any of this stuff. Um, you don't turn into a ball. Who do you think you are? Um... But man, to see them, this isn't a negative and this isn't meant as an insult. To see them just outright lift good parts of Hollow Knight and put it in their game is really exciting. And Mm -hmm. I think that's the best praise I can give them is, like you said, Moon, they, they have seen this thing that reinvented the genre again and revitalized what the genre can mean and said... Yeah, man, we yeah. we gotta take all that cool stuff too. Like, look at how all, look at how cool these pins and these charms are. Like, I have one that I get ten percent chance to do fifty percent more damage. So it's like now I have a ten ch- yep. percent chance to crit. That's awesome. I've mm-hmm. damage numbers popping off of people. Like that's crazy. Uh, this game is really good. Yeah curses <laughs> yeah, i thought i had no. more time before more hollow night <laughs> dude as soon as it started that soundtrack hit me and i was like i almost swore then this is a really good soundtrack yeah and like just the their use of color in in some of the i'm not even running hdr either like mm-hmm. uh, i i oh i am and oh, oh god yeah i i would probably mess myself but um yeah i i like that they went for much less of a gut punch in the intro too. It was very much like here's the found family from the end of the first one kind of coming together and finding their place in the world. And then they break your heart mm-hmm. a little bit, but nothing nothing too serious. But Yeah. Yeah. Orion Will Wisps. <laughs> What's that? It's not a Pixar entry. No, God, the first one very <laughs> much was, was where it's like, oh, look at this, all these cute things. One of them's dead. It's just like, oh, no, what, why, what? Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah, Orion will o wisps just, just go play it. It seems, <laughs> it seems really great. It would have to stumble in some major way for me to not come out of this and say, like, yeah, it's top ten of the year, but it's it seems really great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but that's all I'm playing this week, so let's take a break. Let's talk releases for the week of March 16th, 2020. MLB The Show comes out on PS4. Um, I accidentally put this on last week's show notes, and it was out in some sort of pre-order early access. So it's out for everyone, us peons now, this week. Uh, One of this week's two big releases, Animal Crossing New Horizons, comes out on the Switch. So Bye-bye, everybody. Yeah. Between this and the other big release, like we, we got a lot to... Lots of entertain ourselves this week. Yep. Uh, Doom 64 comes out PC, Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. Uh, if you haven't heard the news stories, uh, they're adding they're adding some new story bits to Doom 64 to tie it into the Doom lore. Uh, mm-hmm. So that I don't I don't know how I feel about that other than it's kind of dumb and I kind of like it. So maybe it's sure. maybe it's on brand. <laughs> <clears throat> Most importantly, Doom Eternal comes out uh, PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Stadia. Um, I, just, I can't. I can't wait to. I need to. I just, it just needs to come out. I need to play this. I, need, I can't wait. <sighs> this looks so good. 
Uh, La Mulana 1 and 2 Hidden Treasures Edition comes out PS4 and Xbox One and Switch. Um, don't play these games. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They are brutally, brutally difficult. And they are... Imagine a Metroidvania where there are... Basically, you're solving puzzles throughout the entire giant map just mm-hmm. 100% did not click with me in a way that it did with everyone else in a way that you think that would work for me but the, those games are way too hard well, do, you, do you know who publishes these maybe develops yeah I should probably say Nicholas publishes these so vote with your wallet uh, Don't buy. okay then who do you know who the developer is uh, I think it's like one dude if it's Nicholas uh, well, they've probably st- st- allegedly stolen it from him anyway so and Nippon Ichi have got their mitts on this Oh, did they? Interesting. Uh, That's better. So, Nippon Ichi, known for really good and easy games <laughs> right. that are short and simple to break. Yeah, I I know they didn't develop it, but if they publish it, that would be really great. Don't buy Nicholas's games, but go buy Nippon Ichi's games. It looks like they've got the, the publishing rights because the whole front page is an ad for it. Great. That's great news. Uh, and lastly, Kingdom Hearts All-in-One package comes out for the PS4. For once, this this has no asterisks on it. This contains no, no, no. everything from the first one to the third one. So, <sighs> you if you wanted to start on Kingdom Hearts, just scoop this. I think it's like fifty bucks, so it's cheaper than the Kingdom Hearts game that came out last year, and it has all three hundred of them. So, or three fifty or two. Let's move on to news stories. Big news story of the week: E three twenty twenty officially canceled uh this was the big rumor uh, around the week thank you devolver digital uh for, mm-hmm. <laughs> for tweeting out cancel your tickets cancel your flight <laughs> yeah uh from the esa quote after cons- careful consultation with our member companies regarding the health and safety of everyone in our industry our fans our employees our exhibitors and our longtime e3 partners we made the difficult decision to cancel e3 2020 scheduled for june 9th through 11th in Los Angeles, end quote. Uh, ESA have added that they're looking to coordinate an online experience to showcase industry announcements and news in June 2020. Uh, Most companies came out as soon as uh, the ESA canceled the show and said, that's fine, we'll do our own thing. Just keep keep a look on our social channels, We'll, we'll release a video. So... Uh, my biggest thing for this right now is I'm hoping mm-hmm. there's a huge party in San Francisco and the giant bomb crew just get everybody over to that. Yeah, that's right. Fly them all in. Have a great party. At the very least, interview Spency. That's yeah. all I really want. You know what? Would, I wouldn't put it past Spency to just show up on GPF <laughs> yeah. one day. Yeah, and what are you guys doing? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think this is going to be really interesting because I think – most people's take on this is different than mine. I think most people are saying, well, this is the end of E3. Like, all the publishers and platform holders are just going to do their own thing, and they won't. They realize they won't need E3 anymore. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case, um, though it, it does seem likely. I think this is a really great opportunity that I hope E3 or the ESA grabs onto – I think this is an opportunity to unreinvent E3 because what they've been doing over the last couple of years by opening it up to the public and trying to bring in more influencers and content creators and stuff, I don't think that that is really the – I don't think that's the focus the show should have. I think it should continue to stay the industry show – that it was really good at before because I think the the industry still needs the spotlight on it in a positive way for at least one weekend. And I think mm-hmm. all, all that other stuff that was happening was kind of diluting it. And we already have packs if you want to go do whatever that is. Um, I don't think you need to mix E3 with that. I think E3 should be... The press conferences, the live streams, the trailers, the the people going to E3 to make deals and get signed as publishers and stuff like that. I think that's what E3 should continue to be, not not the open to the public stuff. Yeah. In all honesty, I think Gersman Calder 
I think if this gets cancelled, this doesn't come back. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's coming back. I mean, like everyone's going to realize how much they can do by themselves. Yep. And I'm sorry, but all of the publishers who need E3, who need that huge gathering, don't have the clout to make an E3 without the bigger guys right. who are going to be like, we can do this alone. We don't need any of the help. Yeah. It is unfortunate that there's like a one-two punch of GDC being canceled this year and E3 being canceled this year that leaves a lot of indie developers in the lurch. Um, but I'm hoping that in the wake of that, that larger indie publishers like Devolver and, and uh, Annapurna can kind of step up and say, well, here's some, here's how we're going to change discovery a little bit in 2020 okay. to kind of address that. Um, so I, this isn't super surprising, but um, it's going to be a really interesting year to see when and how people deal with this stuff. Um, I was going to say including Sony, but they weren't going to go anyway. So I, this doesn't change non-existent plans. So. And, uh-huh. and maybe this just turns into a thing where the big publishers and the big companies just don't go to it anymore. And then it just turns into an indie an indie type thing. Sure. That'd be okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft is planning a two-day live stream due to their canceled GDC plans. Uh, They're calling it GameStack Live. It's going to start on 1 p.m. Eastern Time on the 17th and 18th of this month. Um, And they're basically going to be doing the talks and the showcase stuff they were going to do at GDC. They're just going to stream it on Mixer. Live stream them instead. Yeah. Uh, Details on the one uh, to call out here is details on the Xbox Series X and Project X Cloud are scheduled for the 18th at 2.40 p.m. Eastern and live stream called Xbox Series X plus Project X Cloud equals new chapter in gaming, which is kind of a great and terrible. And you title. thought JRPGs had long titles? That's right. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, the, the 12 teraflops of summer, chapter three. Um, so keep an eye out there. I'm, I'm sure there will be some information there, but if it was for GDC, it's probably not super consumer focused. It might be uh, tech focused and engine focused. Yeah. So if you're looking, if you're looking for a launch game lineup, that might not be the uh, the place that we'll be looking for E3 for that. Uh, <clears throat> talk about the weirdest news story this week. <laughs> uh, Reggie Fiume, uh, the the longtime president uh, of uh, Nintendo America, is going to be joining the board of directors of GameStop. <laughs> yep. Uh, this was not where I was expecting him to land, but he will be joining the board on April 20th, uh, alongside two other new additions, former Walmart president and CEO, Bill Simon, and former PetSmart president and CEO, JK Symantec. Uh, they are joining immediately. Um, this is interesting because the, the GameStop corporation is looking to really push hard on a, a total, rebrand of GameStop stores continue to close the stock price tumbles profits are just destroyed um yep. and they are there have been some leaked proposals about potentially making GameStops into kind of a destination um which have I think look pretty cool but uh a lot of people are sort of poo-pooing it, but, um, you know, if you want somewhere to hold tournaments and have play PC games with your friends that maybe are in your town, that might be a cool thing. But um, I yeah. I think if you're looking to turn your company around pretty quickly and in a pretty serious way, I think Reggie is the dude you bring in. Um I mean, let's face it, if things go terribly, then he's perfectly fine being able to say, well, this was a poop show before I got here. It's not my, f- my yeah, fault. And, and he's not the president, so he's just like board of directors. You know, he, there's 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 less impact to him if things go poorly, but I think there, mm-hmm. he can potentially uh, affect change like he did at Nintendo um, uh, at GameStop, which – would be really interesting to see GameStop turn around and see what a profitable GameStop would look like in 2020, 2021. 
Um, yep. Because I don't, I don't know what that would be. That who knows? Sounds crazy. <laughs> Uh, speaking of crazy, after 16 years, 2K announces they're going to make NFL games again. Um, most importantly, stated in their press release, quote, the games will be non-simulation football game experiences, end quote. I thought that was really interesting because I don't know what that would be until EA decided to throw their weight around and release a press release that says, Quote, EA Sports is the exclusive publisher of NFL simulation games. Our partnership with the NFL and NFLPA remains unchanged. Our agreements have always allowed for non-exclusive development of non-simulation games on various platforms, end quote. So it's like, aha, now I see why the that very lawyery language is in there. Mm-hmm. Yep. So <clears throat> interesting to see what that will be. Uh, uh, sadly, that's not a head-to-head competition between 2k and ea that i think would be really exciting um but maybe that means we can get some uh interesting sort of more actiony arcadey nfl games uh, yep. all management games or right. anything along those lines i can't wait till they come out with nfl street oh, that's the right street games were pretty fun yep mm-hmm. well but unfortunately they will have terrible microtransactions on so that's sort of yes. the, the other side of the coin. Uh, Moon was talking about management games. Good news. Frontier Developments, those of Elite Dangerous and Planet Coaster, uh, are making an F a series of F1 management games. Yep. Uh, they signed a multi-year deal with F1. They're releasing four F1 management games released annually for PC and consoles. Um, yep. That sounds exciting. <laughs> that is yep. something I can 100% get behind. My favorite thing I've heard about this was clearly from somebody who does not play Elite Dangerous because they were like, but I don't know how Frontier are going to get all of the background simulation in the background <laughs> for Formula 1 to happen. Wait a minute. I was like, <laughs> you know, they literally simulate the entire galaxy. They don't just make Planet Zoo. Like, they mm-hmm. make a lot of stuff. I want to say, yeah. apparently the engine that they're using for Elite Dangerous is also going to be used for this F1 manager sim. Oh, cool. So, so it, it'll do the math. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. There's going to be a lot of dialing in things. Yeah, I'm really excited because I, I, think, I think that can potentially be really great. And we don't get stuff like that coming to consoles very often because it's usually like you have a racing wheel and a setup and the, your, your computer is connected to a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so it's mm-hmm. nice to see that some F1 stuff is going gonna, is gonna to be come in consoles as well when i wonder yeah. i wonder too if they'll get into the actual racing portion or or if this is just going to be all the back end stuff and then it's going to simulate the race based on what you've done i hope it's the latter like i hope it's just this like numbers and racers and hiring and training like i i wanted to be like football simulator where it's just like you don't you don't play the game but you you play the office like that yeah. that'd be really great mm-hmm. yeah uh, and then last news story here, Escaping from Consoles, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition comes to PC this summer. Uh, also a super <laughs> horribly kept secret. Uh, this will include the Frozen Wilds DLC, which is really great, and additional outfits and gear. But I didn't really see platform announcements here. I mean, I'm, it's safe to assume if they didn't make a platform announcement, it will probably be on Steam. Um, probably like Steam and Epic. Um, cause I think, uh, Death Stranding is on Epic when it comes out. Um, but if you haven't yet played Horizon Zero Dawn, it's really great. And I bet it's going to look stupid good on PC. So, yep. yeah. And if you, if you do play it, don't take a break after you finish it. Go, go play the, uh, Frozen Wilds DLC. It's really difficult and you will not be able to just hop back in after you, after you take a break. Yeah. So. All right, <clears throat> emails here or questions. First off, uh, Brain Eater from Discord says, Hello, gentlemen, and Moonpeer. I was wondering what Hi, theme Rob. song or jingle from a video game randomly gets stuck in your heads the most. For me, it's always the Chocobo theme. P.S. Love you guys. Sonic Drowning Music, every time. Mm. As soon as I hear a bubble pop, I just think of that dun 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 <laughs> thing. Blorp? Like, go away. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mine is really weird because 
normally it would be Bloody Tears from Castlevania, but it's it's actually Barkerville from Giant Bomb, <laughs> which is like the the dumbest, deepest cut, but it is Bloody Tears with uh, Barkerville lyrics, which is morphed into its own oh, weird, geez. stupid thing from Giant Bomb from like four years ago, and I just I can't not think about it. Every time I hear a stupid jingle, I usually start to think of the Juness jingle from P- uh, Persona 4. Yeah, oh, every day is great geez. at your Juness. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's right. That is a really good one. <laughs> Man. Oh. It's worse because I don't remember, it, because it was never translated fully, I don't know most of the words. I just know like that small little snippet, and then the rest of it is just the song playing in my head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, next question here is from T Bomb Rocks. <clears throat> Piggyback question: If you could have one video game sound effect or song play when you complete a task in real life, what it would what would it be? For me, it would be Last Surprise from Persona when I got a, get a package I forgot I ordered. That's a good one. Hmm. I want to have the Legend of Zelda when you find a hidden thing or whatever little do like do 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 yeah yeah but i don't know when i would want that to pop i think anytime you open something from amazon <laughs> i don't order random stuff like you guys though i know what's uh, coming i mean i order random stuff and then i forget about it well I, I know what's coming and then i forget about it. it's like hey what's on the store st- hey i got a package <laughs> i mean if it's gonna be one it's one of two things it's either the Final Fantasy VII Victory Music, which specifically the uh, animated movie ringtone version of it. <laughs> yeah, of the old classic uh, yes. Victory. That one's really good. When I finish like, a project, a really it should just version. play that. When I export yeah. in uh, Adobe Audition, it should just play that. <laughs> you did uh-huh. it. <laughs> um, and the only other thing would be um, just like a, a good sort of bloop noise. Mm-hmm. Like not not like a bubble or anything, but like a here is a mission. Now you've just completed it. Here is a check mark that just goes in the box, and then it goes bloop and vanishes. Right, like that vanishing sensation with a sound effect is always so good. Yeah, or like that really good <clears throat> video game, like someone when, when someone crosses something off a list, where it's just like that, shh, like that sort of noise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, T Bomb Rocks also asks us the sort of a longer decision for the three of us you are the ceo of all video games and must sequel remake or cancel and he's going to give us a a bunch of options here you pick from three franchises and can pick one game each to remake cancel or sequel are we ready Mm -hmm. yeah first first list mortal Kombat, street fighter guilty gear Mortal Kombat Cancel, Street Fighter Remake, Guilty Gear C- um, sequel. Because Mortal Kombat just had a great entry, and yeah. on top. Street Fighter desperately needs to be remade from the ground up, and Guilty Gear needs a sequel in general. I'm, I might actually agree with you, because my, my knee-jerk was Cancel Street Fighter, because it just... Just, like, put it out to pasture at that this point. That was actually what I was thinking, too. <laughs> yeah, Guilty Gear, I think... I think they just did remake it basically when when Zerd came out. Um, yeah, I might, I might go with you, Moon. I think that might, yeah, that might be okay. Well, he didn't say we all had to agree. No, no. I just think I think Moon, <laughs> Moon and I agree as co CEOs of video games. <laughs> nah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mario, Sonic, Rayman. This one's easy for me. I would do cancel Sonic because uh, that's a put out to pasture one. I would say <clears throat> remake Rayman mm-hmm. because I think they the last two games were really good, and I think if you can kind of take the next step with those for another one, I think that would be really good. And I just think you make another Mario sequel. Because they're, I mean, they're mm-hmm. all good. So yeah, I don't really have yeah, a dog I, in the I fight. Like yeah, yeah. Mario well, that... will, will always get a sequel. Sonic, yeah. I don't really care if they cancel it, and Rayman, I don't care if they cancel it. So <laughs> that's my point. big thing for Sonic is like, I don't really care if he cancels Sonic. He'll still be at the Olympics. It'll be fine. 
Yeah. Yeah. Or if you cancel it, does it make it so that he just no longer exists in the video game industry anymore? Oh, no. So you can't make those games anymore. <laughs> our, our powers are too strong. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Get rid of Smash Brothers. Go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Halo Battlefield Titanfall. Mm. This one's really uh, uh, easy for me. Uh, okay. Remake, cancel, sequel. Yes. I would remake Halo. Cause which I, it sounds like they're basically doing with the new one. Which would be great. Put a lot more Hollow Knight in there. Put Have pins uh-huh. on, on Master Chief. Um, yeah. I think it's easy cancel to Battlefield. cancel Battlefield because I... The last couple games, they're just really floundering. And I think sequel Titanfall, because Titanfall 2 is one of the best first-person shooters uh, of all time. Mm-hmm. I think they need we need Titanfall it's, 3. In fact, one might even say it's one of the most innovative first-person shooters of all time. <laughs> Certainly one of the most, best ones I've played in years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe uh, just remake and then sequel Titanfall. Oh, don't even tease me. <laughs> Man. Yeah. God, yeah, just make a time-traveling Titanfall, the whole thing. Pfft. So good. Uh, all right, three more. Resident Evil, Silent Hill, Alone in the Dark. Uh, this is an easy one again for me. Okay. Um, sequel, remake, cancel. Yeah, I I think... Yeah, Resident, Resident Evil 7 was incredible. Yeah. Like, truly incredible. So the fact that they haven't done a sequel to that yet, that's the thing that they need to sequelize. Don't get me wrong. They're too busy doing remakes. That's the issue. (laughs) (laughs) That's my thing is like remake is easy for that one because it's like, all right, four is up next in the list. Let's go. They're already doing them. Yeah. Uh, Silent Hill, everyone's so, everyone's so turned on by the PT demo that it's just like, okay, whatever, just remake it, get it over and done with so we can forget about it. Let's just get over this whole PT nonsense. And Alone in the Dark were were okay. They were a little bit scary, but they were more action games than horror games. So I'm fine with that getting cancelled. I think if you if you could totally reboot Alone in the Dark in an interesting way, I think that could be something. But I don't know. Number one, I don't know who owns Alone in the Dark anymore. Atari, potentially. Uh Um... But I just don't think there's anything. I think Resident Evil and Silent Hill and Amnesia all kind of cover the bases, and then like the Man of Medan for the the cool episodic interactive stuff. Like, yeah, I don't know what else you'd have to do. Something really seriously different with Alone in the Dark to do something, unless it's just like suddenly Alan Wake two. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, I'll take it. Alone in yeah. the Wake, yeah. Uh, next one, Final Fantasy, Fantasy Star, Persona. <sighs> oh, Evil person. Yeah. I just, uh, cancel Final Fantasy. Let's go. Um, uh, I think of all of them, Fantasy Star hasn't really had a new one since the PSP. Therefore, it needs to be remade. Cancelled. You're, you're Persona right. <laughs> needs to be uh, sequeled because every Persona game is a new game. So therefore, sequel it and keep that chain going because Persona is great. But you yep. can say that same Final thing Fantasy. about Final Fantasy. Every Final Fantasy is a different game. Yeah, okay, but you've got 15 on one side and 5 on the other. I'll take the one that's only had 5, please. Yeah. I don't want this 15 one. Honestly, the only, the only reason why I wouldn't want to cancel Final Fantasy is not... Not because of the name, because like you said, we have 15 of them. So at this point, they could make a different game entirely. Final and Final. Na- exactly, and name it something else, and it's basically Final the Fantasy. Final Fantasy. <laughs> but <laughs> Too fast, too final, too fantasy. That's right. But then do you still have Chocobos and stuff in the game? Like, would people still want that? Because I, I would no. still love to see another medieval game before they can't, a medieval style game before they cancel it. Mm, sure okay. yeah but yeah, i don't the only one that i could choose to cancel would be fantasy star just because they haven't done anything in forever and they and, until and recently star refused universe to was... bring anything over here so. yeah and like fantasy star universe for like 360 and psp was fine but it's it's not not the old jrpg like fantasy star one through four that you really want yeah it was like an offline mmo and it was it was fine yeah. And lastly, Apex Legend Fortnite PUBG. 
I don't really have my I, dog in this fight. <laughs> I would cancel PUBG. I would sequel Apex Legends, and I would remake Fortnite. Well, they just did. Yeah, that's fair. Cancel Fortnite, remake PUBG, sequel Apex. I'd remake Fortnite without the building. <laughs> so yeah, PUBG. Yes. So cancel Fortnite. <laughs> right, yeah, that's right. Cancel PUBG. Remake PUBG. But save Fortnite, save the world. That's a separate... Yes. Just, yeah, don't throw the baby just out make, with the bathwater. Just make PUBG more cartoony. That way you get your Fortnite fix, but Perfect. there's no building. Yeah, there just make go. PUBG more good. Yeah, I heard. I hear you. Get yes. that cartoonish you. frying mm-hmm. pan. That's right. That's mm-hmm. right. <laughs> Now we're going to get sued. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, lastly, Jimbo Jango sends his email, says, Jimbo Jango's here. I have a question for the crew and a question for Moon. For the crew, do you remember the first video game you bought with your own money? I believe mine was Mega Man 2. It was probably before this, but the earliest one I can remember is Pokemon Red. Yeah, man, mine had to be around that time. We didn't get money for doing chores, so mine had to have been later. Mm-hmm. I was not, like, I could never save up any money. Yeah, that was kind of my problem. I had to buy my PlayStation 1, and then I bought Final Fantasy 7 with that. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I, I think I got a PS1 for, like, Christmas or birthday or something. I think one of the first ones I remember buying with my own money... Oh, it's like when I got a job in high school. So it was probably like Vagrant Story era, I think. It was pretty pretty late, all things considered. But again, no no Game chore money. The JRPGs early there, That's, I see. No, Final Fantasy One was my my first JRPG. So. Yeah, I was gonna say I played a lot of stuff on the Nintendo. So. Yeah, <laughs> way yeah. too young for JRPGs, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Uh, and my question for Moon, Moon, if achievements slash trophies did not exist, what would gaming look for, like for you these days? Thanks for the show and have a great week. An emptier hard drive. <laughs> yeah, just 2% storage space used. <laughs> yeah, probably an empty hard drive, but honestly, the way I play games wouldn't have changed. Uh, because even before achievements, like before the era of the 360, like I was still a... It's... The thing with achievements is, is achievements is a numerical value to a, a worm that was always eating my brain. You have the completionist worm. The completionist worm yeah. or the frugality worm, where it's like, I right. need to get as much money as I can out of this product because I paid for it and I don't have, you know, $10,000 lying around to go and buy more games with. It's like, no, this is my game for six months. Right. This is the thing I will be playing. Squeeze this is the thing every drop. Every <laughs> single bit of pennies out yeah. of it. And then you take that into modern days. It's like, I literally a month ago bought three games, pre-ordered all of the games that I'm planning on buying for this year so far. And it's like, I did that knowing full well. I can pl- I can buy a new game and play a, a new game tomorrow if I want, but still, that part of me, that completionist slash frugal thing in my head will be like, no, you haven't finished with that. Right. You're not done like, with it yet. You didn't beat that game. You didn't get everything. You quit at eighty nine percent. Come on, exactly. <laughs> like that. That achievements are just like a a number to put on it to make me feel better about this very serious problem that I right. have. It makes the brain worms yeah. feel better. Exactly. Yeah. It's just a. It's just a nice little little addition, a little smile to to my quite serious problems. To be honest, let's, right. let's face it. Well. You're not the only one that has problems because I can't tell you for a while there, the end of my achievements was like a two or oh, something. Yeah. Oh, it's the worst. Well, for me, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you would be surprised how many people would randomly send me messages on Xbox Live yeah, and say, yeah. dude, if you just do this one achievement, it will make <laughs> that like zero. like a whole or, list of yeah. things. It's, These are only mm-hmm. three points, man. You have, and, you're killing me. And now it's just funny. I think I am back to zero now, but now it's just funny just to see how it affects people <laughs> yeah they just was it they're... overcooked by any chance that did that to you it might have been yeah. i don't remember it was it... recently like in the last couple of months but it makes people really itchy it's really funny yeah mm-hmm. yeah because they only did fives and zeros forever yeah and then three games came along every six years or so that ruin it yep it's well wasn't it for the rest of us 
wasn't it orange band? box oh, orange box. band orange yeah. box uh the stupid marble shooting up game where you have to shoot marbles luke or the... that's the one yeah um overcooked did it which is annoying because overcooked is like completed the tutorial one right beat every level with three stars nine at the end of it yeah it's like, like cool thanks so much thanks you pain in the backside giant jerks um <laughs> Yeah, I. It's bad that I can probably name more, but I won't. Yeah. Just, I hate those games. <laughs> yeah, you're part of the problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How dare you? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. We appreciate it. TVGP.tv. Everywhere to find and follow us on the right hand side of the page. Patreon.com/slash E1M1. The ones are numbers. Behind the scenes, early access. Brand new show coming up soon. As long as soon as I can get around to working on it, uh, it will be out. Um. Uh, Game Club is wrapping up here fairly soon, so you have a little bit more time to dive into the Stardew Valley problem. Uh, I meant to post the poll for the brand new one for the patrons, and I forgot to, so I'll do that today. Uh, If you're a patron, go vote for the next game that we will suffer through. Um, Although, this year's games have been pretty good. Um, old dog new flicks a brand new episode of that coming out on the patreon feed and the public feed pretty soon a last friday of the month i think that's it so we'll see you all next week bye bye okay nymph hit me with your titles all right so yeah it's theme hospital (laughs) Optimize and efficiency. You have a nail now. Now I can zip, zip, zip. <laughs> uh, give me Dearth Mouth. They don't Pixar it. Followed by one of them's dead. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, Moon, how about yours? His name is Nugget. Bob and Weave one. Not good at weird chess. Optimizing efficiency. Dragging someone behind you. People pestering me online. Thematic games. It's the same for everyone. The real Hollow Knight starts now. The Pogo is super helpful. Welcome to 2020. Me with my first gun. Get me my dirt mouth. And R, G, J, and P. G, J, and P. I have, uh, I didn't wind them up. He's a real renaissance chicken. The the completionist worm or the frugality worm. Uh, Gimme Dirt Mouth. His name is Nugget. Optimize and Efficiency. And R, G, J, P. I like he's a real renaissance chicken. Optimize and Efficiency. And I do like RGJP. <laughs> Let me Google what was that. RGJP? I was gonna say, what was that? It was um, you were talking about the game that Angel picked up, and I said to you, "Well, does it have oh, RGJ and P in the genre by any chance?" And then Boston was like, "The fucking countdown clock." Yeah. Like tick 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 tick. I remember you saying it. I just couldn't figure out the context in my own mind. Mm-hmm. Okay, RGJP does not appear to be anything horrific on the internet. So we're okay. clear for that one. What? <laughs> Are we going to do RGJP or RGJNP? I think RGJP sounds better if we if we mm-hmm. pick it. Yeah. That old Renaissance chicken are the two standouts to me. Nymph, which one do you feel better about? I'm good with RGJP. Yeah, that's the one I'm leaning more towards. Just because it also seems like it's going to be a tongue, tongue twister. Yes. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't be the one to talk. I barely made it past tongue. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Let me know when you guys are ready. I'm ready. I think I'm ready. Okay, starting in three, two, one. This is the Avid Video Game Podcast, episode 647 from March 16th, 2020. R-G-J-P. It's a backronym. It's Japanese racing simulators with bars. (laughs) 
pretty good. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening and watching, whether it's on Twitch or YouTube or wherever. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, everyone. Get better soon. <laughs> All right. We can stop recording.